Hi, science friends. Have you ever watched a plane going overhead and wondered, how does it stay in the air? Have you ever had a cool dream where you're flying? Have you ever daydreamed about being a bird and flying free wherever you want to go? Well, science can't grow us wings just yet. But thanks to science, we do know a lot about flight. And today, we're going to show you how to fly with your own kite. So we're going to learn about some of the forces that make a kite fly, and then you can try it yourself. So yeah, how do things fly? It's pretty amazing to see things gliding through the air. The science of flight is called aeronautics. And aeronautics teaches us that there are four forces of flight. One is lift, the force of going up. One is gravity, the force of going down. One is thrust, the force of going forward. And one is drag, the force of going backward. When you have all of them in harmony in your design, you can take flight too. So let's show you how to do it with your very own kite. To make this kite, we're going to mark our paper in a special way. And we're gonna make a design that catches all four forces as it flies. So to make your own kite, you're gonna need some good construction paper, some tissue paper for the tail of the kite, which you might think just looks pretty, but it's actually really important to how the kite flies. You're gonna need some twine, a couple of straws, tape, scissors, a ruler, and a marker. So once you have all of that and put it together, you're gonna have your own way to fly. So you ready science friends? Take your paper and fold it lengthwise like this. And then on the outside edge, you're going to measure four inches. Why four inches? Because to capture all four forces, we need to balance our kite in just the right way. So I'm going to mark four inches here. And then to make your kite shape, you can take your ruler from the top corner to the side and measure it off like this. I'm going to put a black mark on it so you guys can see it. All right, that's the first part. Then from your four inch mark, take it and measure all the way down to the bottom corner. I'm going to draw that off too. Now why do kites have this shape? It's part of the four forces. Cut it out. And when you open your kite, you'll see the part of the kite that was designed to catch lift. And that is this part. This is called the sail of the kite. Kites are designed this way because the sail has the most surface area to catch wind and lift up the kite. So it's not just to look pretty. We're actually capturing one of the four forces right here in the sail. Now comes the pretty part. You can decorate your kite any way you like. Some cultures put cool dragon faces on them for good luck. And if you like this dragon face, you can go to our website, find a template and trace it on your own kite. You could put your name on it. You could draw a flower. I like writing Chinese characters, so I'm going to write a character on my kite that says peace. I think kites are very peaceful when they're flying. So here's our kite with its good strong sail. Now we're going to make it stable so it can fly in the air. The next important part of your kite is this part, the tail. I have one, two, three, four, five, six strips of tissue paper here. We're gonna attach them with tape to the bottom of the kite. And why do we do that? 
The tail allows for drag that pulls the kite back a little bit. And what that does is tilt the kite in the air so that it catches the most wind. Without a tail, a kite would perhaps be flat like this and the wind wouldn't lift it. The tail balances the kite so it gets the most wind underneath. Now I'm going to take my tape and put some of that on the bottom of my kite. Again, you can use whatever colors you like. You can use whatever design you like, but don't forget the tail. Aeronautics is all about balance. And we're gonna balance this kite just right for you to get some lift. So we have our tail attached. Next, we're gonna make the frame so you can run with the kite and lift it up into the wind. Two drinking straws is all you need. I'm gonna open my straw. And here's what we're gonna do. Take your first straw and cut some twine and thread it right through. See how I'm doing that? We're going to tape this to the kite so it holds and you can use it for lift off. I'm going to put my tape with string down on the sail of the kite and then I'm going to do it again. Here goes the next one. And remember, when you're flying this kite, you're going to want a windy day. Extra wind gives extra lift. You can run as fast as you want to give the kite thrust, but if you don't have a little wind, you won't get that lift. So if your kite doesn't work the first time, don't be disappointed. Check the weather report for a really windy day and you'll be flying. So I'm gonna put my straw down like this. And now I'm gonna tape them down. You can see on the back here, this is what we're trying to achieve. It's going to take a lot of tape to put the straws down, but that's okay. It won't affect the kite's lift. So here I'm going to tape my straws right down to the kite. On each end of our straw, we put a little tape and I'm going to add a little more in the middle to make it strong. How's it looking so far? I think that looks pretty good. Now our next step is we're going to tie it up and attach it to a string so you can take it outside and give it a try. I'm going to take the ends of my string and tie them together like this. You can make a pretty good strong knot in them. You can see like that. Okay, that's one side. All knotted up and ready. Next, we take the other side and make it a nice strong knot. So you can see now we've got the strings of our kite and we're ready to attach the string so you can run with it. For this you can use a toilet paper roll or whatever you have and I'm going to take this off of our already made kite and just show you how it works. So you can attach lots and lots of string. You can see we've got lots of it here to our toilet paper roll. Just make sure you put some tape on the end roll it on up and take the other end and just tie it to your kite. So I'm going to tie, if you can see, through these two knots. So they're all tied up nice and neat. It doesn't have to look perfectly neat, but you want to make sure all of your knots are tied up together like this. Oops, I lost one of my tails. Watch out for your scissors. You definitely don't want to lose your tail while you're making a kite. So you can see the back looks like this. And now with your line attached, you are ready to go out and fly. I hope you guys have fun experimenting with the four forces of flight. 
Enjoy. Bye, science friends.